Bibliophiles of the internet, my name is Adriana and today I'm here to bring you my September wrap-up. As you should know, September marks the start of Hispanic Heritage Month, which obviously for me is incredibly important, so I chose to exclusively read Own Voices Latinx books. The first book I read for September was The Weight of Feathers by Anna Marie McLemore. This is Own Voices Latinx magical realism about two rival families, the Corbos and the Palomas. Both families have traveling shows where the Corbos put on a high balancing act in the trees and the Palomas swim in mermaid exhibitions. The two families are visiting the same town when disaster strikes and the unthinkable happens. A Corbo saves a Paloma's life and the two young enemies slowly begin to fall in love. What I love most about this story is that it's equal parts commentary and romance. Anna Marie McLemore is able to use touches of whimsy and magic to explore the realities of immigration and those who are pushed into the margins. Both of these families are made up of immigrants, the Corbos being Romani and the Palomas being Hispanic, and the story explores how their family's heritage and traditions have literally become sideshows for the locals' consumption and entertainment. But we also come to understand why these people chose this path, because the only quote-unquote normal jobs they qualified for offered about the same amount of stability, safety, and payout, which isn't saying much. So you have this thread about immigrant families trying to gain acknowledgement and making a place for themselves. The romance is also wonderful and heartfelt. There's so much about disrupting cycles of inherited hatred, suffering, and fear through simple acts of love, but it's also about learning to love yourself and your differences. There are some mild triggers for abuse, violence, and confronting trauma, but I really enjoyed the emotional journey this story took me on and I gave it four stars. After that, from my library, I listened to The Education of Margot Sanchez by Lilian Rivera, read by Elmarie Guerra. This is Own Voices Latinx YA contemporary about Margot Sanchez, whose parents pay good money to send her to a private school outside of the Bronx. But recently, Margot was caught stealing her dad's credit card to buy hundreds of dollars worth of clothes on the internet. As punishment, it's decided that Margot will spend her summer working in the family supermarket instead of on the beach with her friends, and Margot will do whatever it takes to get out of it. I was pleasantly surprised by this story because it's extremely dramatic and Margot is definitely a quote-unquote unlikable character who doesn't always make the best decisions, but I think that just made me want to root for her even more and made me want to see her push through all those mistakes. You have to realize that this is a story of redemption, it's a story of self-discovery, where Margot has to go through a ton of tonterias and foolishness before realizing that she can't live like that. To me, the heart of this story is Margot reconciling the two parts of herself, the face she puts on for her prep school friends and the detached facade she puts on in the Bronx. Eventually, she reaches a breaking point where she has to ask herself what is real, what matters, and how she can root out the toxicity in her life. The story also comments on the toxic nature of machismo and how Margot struggles against the men in her family who hold aggressive ideas of masculinity and how they can protect her innocence. And there's also a fantastic discussion about how Latinx immigrant families are slaves to their image, how people think of them and how everything they're associated with will reflect back on them and how that can also be toxic. Again, Margot and her family don't always respond to these pressures in appropriate ways, but that's life. Who can claim to have been the absolute best version of themselves at the age of 15? Who can even claim to be the absolute best version of themselves in this moment? None of us. But Margot learns and changes, and for me, that's what makes the difference. I really enjoyed listening to this one, and I gave it four stars. Then I read slash listened to one of my new favorite books, The House of Impossible Beauties by Joseph Casara, read by Christian Barillas. I'm going to restrain myself from gushing about this brilliant, brilliant book because I have been recommending it left and right. I made a huge recommendation post for it on Instagram for the Latinx Bookstagram tour, I mentioned it in my Latinx book recommendations video, and I made a 5 reasons to read video all about this book. All of those things will be linked down below, so please be sure to check them out. But suffice to say, this story is amazing, it is essential, and it has profoundly, profoundly affected my life. I gave this its rightful five stars. Then I confess that I did read a non-Latinx book, but I promise I had a very good reason because it was the graphic novel adaptation of The Adventure Zone, Here There Be Gerblins by the McElroys and Carrie Peach. So I had to read this one ASAP because I started listening to the Adventure Zone podcast about a month ago. I mean, I'm way into it now, I'm almost done with the original campaign, but I figured I would never be closer to the beginning than when I got this, if that makes sense. Like all the bits and goofs and details from the first arc were so fresh in my mind, so I just went for it. 
For those of you who don't know, The Adventure Zone is a fantasy slash comedy podcast where the McElroys and their father play Dungeons and Dragons in real time and it's fantastic. This campaign is about Magnus, a human warrior, Taco, an elf wizard, and Merle, a dwarf cleric, who are trying to reclaim powerful magical objects that could destroy everything if they fall into the wrong hands. It kind of sounds like a generic fantasy plotline, but with the McElroy's antics and creativity, it is anything but. I love these characters who don't take themselves too seriously. I love this fantasy world that is crafted through a lens of positivity and sincerity and love, and honestly, this adaptation is successful in so many ways. I can't even begin to imagine how challenging it is to adapt a podcast to a visual medium, but Carrie Peach has really captured these characters and their quirks, and the comic balances the best of the McElroy's bits with equal amounts of plot. There's a lot of great references to things in later arcs, the comic incorporates Griffin as the DM in interesting ways, and honestly, the entire thing is funny as hell. As an adaptation, this is perfect. Obviously, as a mega fan of the original podcast, I gave this five stars. Then I was back on track with The Air You Breathe by Francis de Pontes Pibles, read by Rebecca Mozo. This is an incredible own voices piece of queer Latinx historical fiction with a fantastic music element. I also made a five reasons to read video for this where I go in depth and strongly recommend this book. So again, I'm gonna save myself some time since I already put in the work and just redirect you to that video, which will also be linked down below. So please do check that out. For the record, I gave this one four and a half stars. After that, my poetry collection for September was Peluda by Melissa Lozada Oliva. She is an award-winning slam poet, and this collection is a written form of many of her spoken word pieces that explore the connection between hair, style, and Latinidad itself. This collection is powerful and honest in exploring the ways the poet has struggled with hair and body image, how she has tried to conform to popular styles to be accepted, how she has cycled through self-loathing because body hair is stigmatized as dirty and gross, and how this stigma especially surrounds brown folks. One of my favorite pieces is where she talks about how a white roommate confronted her about the hair she left behind in the drain and how it was really freaking her out. And the piece says, imagine you are what makes a white girl in a Brooklyn apartment scream, and that's as real as it gets. In my opinion, the poet makes a lot of creative connections between body hair and culture and pain and homeland and self-love, and I was 100% here for it, four and a half stars. And the last book I read in September was the audiobook of Pride by Ibi Zaboy, read by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is a modern Afro-Latinx remix of Pride and Prejudice, and honestly, I shouldn't even have to say anything else. It's about a Haitian Dominican girl, Yuri Benitez, whose neighborhood is quickly becoming gentrified with the installation of a mini mansion right across the street. Shortly after its completion, the wealthy Darcy family moves in, bringing along the handsome yet judgmental Darius, who Yuri hates. As the two of them get thrown together, they learn more and more about each other's worlds, as well as their place in this rapidly changing landscape. What I love about this is that as a retelling, it stands out. Pride and Prejudice has been done and redone every which way, but it's never been done like this. When a retelling can elevate a story in the sense that it allows people who have never been able to see themselves in such a deeply classic romantic narrative to then be reflected in that narrative, that alone is amazing work. I love the way the original events of Jane Austen's story translate to this modern context, and it often feels effortless. Those people who are familiar with the original text can anticipate when the story is going to twist and turn, but the form those twists and turns take are completely unique. Obviously, the original story explores differences in class, but I feel like this story has even more nuance because it's about gentrification and privilege and race and class and how all of these things impact Juri and Darius's evolving relationship. Even though I think the pacing was a little too tight and I would have liked a little more breathing room between plot points, this story definitely brought joy into my life and I highly recommend it. I gave it four stars. And honestly, a huge yes please to more classic retellings with entire casts of POC characters because I will buy all of those books. So those are all the books I read in the month of September. As I always say, if you've read any of these yourself or if you would like to read them in the future, I would love to discuss. But that's everything I have for this wrap up today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I'll catch you on the flip side of the page. Bye.